Hi, I'm Carrie Hanks, the director of the Spanish Fort Salem Area Chamber of Commerce, and I want to welcome you to our SAC lunch lectures today. And today we have Brad Tanner from Triple T Heating and Cooling. Let me introduce you and welcome you up to, to give us a talk. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, thanks to the audience in the room and uh, to those at home watching. I uh, want to thank you for the opportunity to share some uh, ideas with the people of Spanish Fork. Um, uh, again, my name is Brad Tanner. I've lived in Spanish Fork all my life, and I've made my career in uh, heating and cooling. Uh, the topic I'd like to share with you today is uh, on carbon monoxide, and it's also refer referred to a lot of times as uh, CO, is the, is the term you'll hear a lot of times to shortcut it. Uh, Maybe from uh, anybody in the audience, what can you tell me that you know about carbon monoxide? It can kill you. It can kill you. The characteristics of carbon monoxide is it's, it's odorless, it's tasteless, it's a poisonous gas. And what it does to our bodies is uh, it dis displaces the oxygen in our blood, depriving our vital organs of, of the oxygen it needs. So that's what it does to our bodies. Uh, the mild symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning is uh, headache, fatigue, shortness of breath, nausea, dizziness. What do some of those things resemble? The flu. The flu. It really resembles the flu and oftentimes goes uh, misdiagnosed because of that. Uh, the one thing it doesn't have that the flu has is, is a fever. It generally doesn't have that similarity. Um, carbon monoxide is created by the incomplete burning of fuel. So this could come from a furnace, a fireplace, gas oven, dryer, water heater, automobile, uh, a barbecue, or temporary fuel heaters. Um, the three main causes for carbon monoxide in order, number one, a main cause is auto exhaust from attached garage. Uh, number two is a non-maintained equipment or appliance. And number three is improper venting of that appliance. So that's the three main causes. I've got some actual articles. Uh, I kind of pay attention uh, as, as things are happening in, in the media, and I try to keep track of the carbon monoxide uh, events that are going on. And, and uh, I, I thought I'd share a couple with you. This one is actually uh, out of the Tribune in October of 2008. It's got a picture of uh, Lake Powell on the front of it. And uh, starts out uh, here, Bullfrog Marina, can anybody hear me? We need help. Glenn Howarth's faint voice hissed over the Marine Band radio. He had chest pains. The seven other people aboard the rented houseboat were sick and some were unconscious. There is something going on and we don't know what it is, the 62-year-old said. The dispatcher at Lake Powell, who heard his June distress call, knew immediately. This is a classic case of carbon monoxide poisoning, the dispatcher told him. Howarth was pronounced dead hours later after he suffered heart attack on the boat. And the rest of the seven was air flighted out. Uh, so, very dangerous situation. We hear that quite often, actually, uh, at Lake Powell with the houseboats, with swimming behind boats and uh, having the generators running at the same time. Uh, it, 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 uh, because it's odorless and you can't see it, you, you don't know what's going on. So if a generator's running back there, it's going to stay, the fumes are going to float around the water level and people swimming or being on the back of a boat, all of a sudden they're overcome and, and don't really know. So that's how that can happen on the houseboats. One of the audience for you at home uh, asked about a, a, an incident recently with the scouts and uh, tents and portable heaters, and that is a, a common case with carbon monoxide uh, with the with the CO that they can put out. This other article uh, had actually a happy ending on it. Uh, uh, it's in the Tribune. This was in November of 05. Uh, the title is Family Treated for Carbon Monoxide Poisoning. A Cottonwood Heights couple and their teenage daughter were taken to LDS Hospital early Saturday and treated for carbon monoxide poisoning after a faulty furnace leaked the odorless, colorless gas in their house. 
The family's carbon monoxide alarm sounded about 10 o'clock Friday night, but they thought something was wrong with the alarm and went to bed. Uh, about 5 o'clock the next morning, the father woke up feeling sick. He discovered his daughter was semi-conscious and promptly moved his family outside. Firefighters discovered the carbon monoxide level in the home was 600 parts per million, considered dangerously high. So there's an example of somebody that had a CO detector and, and, and disregarded the, the, even the alarm that went off, thinking that maybe something was just wrong with the alarm. We had a client uh, send in uh, this comment that she, she discovered after we were doing some service on her furnace, and this was in December of 06. We never thought that getting our furnace checked out was very important. It didn't seem to be that old, and it heated the house just fine. We had put off getting a green sticker for about five years and finally decided it was time. After we called and made an appointment for a full tune-up and green sticker, to our surprise, our furnace failed the first test that was performed. The technician asked if anyone had been sick in our family. Our 10-year-old daughter had been sick for over a week. She would get sick all night, <coughs> nauseated and throwing up, only to get feeling better during the day. She started doing better after our old furnace was turned off and replaced. We think she had suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, the reason she may have got feeling better during the day is uh, she got out and got some fresh air. Maybe went back to school, come back to the house, the doors are closed, and, and again, mild uh, symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. Things to never do in our homes is we should never bring in a briquette type cooking uh, into the home or garage. They put off a lot of carbon monoxide. Never use a gas stove or dryer for temporary heat. Uh, never run a generator or a car in the garage, even if the door is open. Some things you can do to protect you and your family. You can install a CO detector in your home, RV, trailer, or boat. It's recommended that you actually have one of these installed on each level of your home. Uh, a hallway is a good common place so that the people in each bedroom can, can hear it audibly. The best types are a battery backup with a digital display so that you can see the levels of the carbon monoxide. Also a type with a history button to see if the CO was present while you were away. Uh, the history button allows you to come back from a vacation maybe or a weekend being away and you can actually push it and it will display the highest level of CO if there was any while you was gone so that you'd also know. Um, have your gas furnace or water heater and fireplace tuned up yearly by a professional with proper tools and test equipment. They should measure the carbon monoxide in the flue pipe and in the living space as part of their tune-up. Having a CO detector in your house is not a substitute for proper maintenance on your equipment. <clears throat>